Thank you so much for, for having us here from Sweden. It is our third visit to Jersey, this wonderful island. And um, I must say that I'm impressed. You are quite a uh, small country, I must say. And it's, it's, it really makes a difference for, for me coming from Sweden to see how connected you are to your, to your society and where things really matter for you. So thank you for having us. I was also very pleased to, to hear a colleague, a biologist, talking in the former uh, video here. It's so much that we as biologists should have done. And I, I must say that as a biologist, uh, we, we quite rarely step up in society and, and do things. Very, the most of the biologists from university, as myself, um, ends up um, as scientists or uh, different governments, but very rarely come out as entrepreneurs or company owners. Um, I represent Promessa Foundation here today. And um, I, 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 as, as you said, um, I worked for 15 years as an environmental engineer, but I, I, if, not to confuse anyone, I didn't start the organic farm or shop at the plant. So it was after the 15 years that I, I saw that my passion for gardening and composting and things like that really led me into starting a company on my own. And perhaps inspired by, by the gardening that I have been doing. How many of you are passionate gardeners here? A few. Um, and um, of course it gives you a perspective that isn't um, the same as if you don't. But um, I think that the word composting is one of the most misused word or perhaps with the different associations depending on what you have done. And perhaps if I could give you something from today to bring home, I would like to, to uh, give you the understanding for a few words. One of them is the word organic and uh, the cycle of organic life or carbon. I mean, we heard in the, in the video here also how we, we need to try to, to mimic nature and how we need to understand in a different varieties of, of uh, of uh, processes in society. Uh, I have done a lot of lectures and met a lot of people and I must say that I'm surprised that a majority of everyone in society today doesn't really know what the word organic means. And we use it a lot. We even talk about that companies is growing organically, which is very odd. But um, may I ask you in the front row here, uh, what does organic mean to you? You can just shout it out. So. Natural. That is number one most usual and wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> and more suggestions, anyone dare? Healthy. Uh, that is number two yeah. or number three, yes, also wrong. <laughs> and may I? Um, direct. Direct. Yes, and, uh, and, and uh, very, very, very rarely I hear the right answer. Um, and I think that because very many of your decisions in your daily life are depending on that you know that, then it scares me that you don't. I mean, it takes like 15 minutes, we have 15 minutes now, to, to really teach you what it is. Um, and I think that I have something to, to, to click with. Yeah, thank you. And green is on going to the next, yes. Um, organic is something that is created with the help of the energy from the sun. And there's only one type of creatures who can create organic material, and that is plants. So everything that has built its body from plants is organic. That means that you and I, we are organic. All the animals are organic. All the plants are organic. But also things that isn't looked upon as very natural, like petrol, uh, paraffin oil is organic because it has its origin from plants. Even though we, as I did in the chemical plants, use that oil to produce plastic. So, but it, we need to know that. That is one simple thing. Can you promise me that you never forget it? <laughs> Everything that contains carbon is organic. It has nothing to do with being biodegradable. It has nothing to do with being 
uh, living or, or so, because it could be plastic and that is not within that direction. So, but if we talk about a plant, of course that is biodegradable once, once it dies. And we are when we die. And after having um, been uh, trying to tutor or to, to teach others in how to treat a compost very well, um, suddenly people started to ask me, how come that your compost is creating soil within two to three weeks in a well-smelling process and mine is not? And I said to them that probably you need to look upon your compost, bin or hype or whatever you have, as a living organism. And, and I started to call myself a well-organized compost on my way to biodegradation because I understood that a compost and me, we have very similar needs. And, and the needs, the things that is needed for something to be alive is those four things that you see there. I and a compost me, we need air to breathe. We need moist, not dry, not wet. And we need a temperature that is below fever. If it says 45 degrees on the thermometer, it's probably not I who read it, if you see what I mean. Um, and in our bodies, we need biodegraders to take care of our food. I mean, think about if we eat and you expect the food to be deposited half a year later. No, it's not a good idea. I mean, uh, the, the biodegradation, a healthy biodegradation should be very quick and well smelling. Everything that is smelling ugly is something that has been treated badly by humans. In nature, more or less nothing t uh, smells ugly. And that is something to remember. Um, so um, in 98, after having been um, a leader of this new organic shop, which I thought I was going to do for the rest of my life, I started to think about how come that I know how to take care of everything from the kitchen and the garden in a well-smelling and prostitute process. But what about my, my own body? How is that going to be taken care of when I die? And today, um, I have tried to, to look upon it in a pedagogic way here. If you, if you see a leaf that is falling from the trees, it has three options once it is dead. I mean, it still looks like a leaf after one day, two days, but it is dead. It cannot reproduce, and the only destiny is to be broken down. And that breaking down could happen in three different ways. Either it could become soil in this aerobic and nice smelling process, which is very quick. And, and it, it takes that all those four things with life needs to be included. Or the other alternative is like a plan B for nature. And that is when something is lacking, it's too hot, it is too wet, or it is no air available, or it is poisonous, so there's no animals. And then uh, the rotting process is, is kicking in. And the word rotting uh, is, is sometimes misused, but, but at least you, you could understand that it is like if you forget a, a bunch of flowers in a vase and, and it stands there for 14 days, you know, that, that smell is, is rotting. And that is the plan B that we are today using for half of the population when once we die. Instead of, of, of going for the positive, quick, smelling process. And the plan C that is used for the, for the leaf is, is the burning process. That, it happens also very rarely in nature when there are volcanoes or flash and lightning, thunder and lightning, but fire is not used very much by nature itself. Uh, so um, nature always uses plan A and human beings tend to, to use the plan B and C very much. So I saw it as my task to see, um, is there anyone who's trying to do anything about this in the world? And I looked around and I couldn't find anyone. And I was occupied with my shop. I didn't intend to do anything else. But I said to myself, OK, I make a little survey to see if anyone else would like to see a change in this. So over two years, I interviewed around 1,000 people. And only three out of those didn't like the idea. So I said to myself, well, I have to continue. And um, I, I, I try to find what could we do with the, with the body to really make this good, beautiful, well-smelling process happening. Uh, and you have to go back to the, the beginning of humanity to see how, when did it go so wrong? I mean, 
I hear people say sometimes, but why don't we do the most natural? Why don't we just dig the body down? That is not natural. Have you ever seen a, 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 a fox burying their relatives? Or, or a, yeah, a rabbit? No, never. I mean, digging something down underground is not the most natural thing to do. It is just something we did for a thousand years. Um, the most natural was that once we dropped dead on the field, in the forest or wherever, when the heart was stopped to beat and the lungs didn't inhale any oxygen or air any longer, then we started to smell a bit ugly. And then the carnivores were there very quickly to tear us apart, spread us around, and soil was produced or humus. And that is why we never see any consequences of the dying in nature. But when we started to move into societies and we wanted to, to protect our beloveds, we were standing there with a full-sized body and we didn't know what to do with it. And when humans don't know what to do, we always have the same pattern, we always start to hide. So all the burial industry is about disposal or hiding, getting rid of, instead of taking care of. So what I did, I tried to to find the most ethical way of imitating or mimicry or uh, mimic nature uh, to see that the body falls apart into small particles that are dried so that we are not in a hurry, the no rotting process is starting. And, um, and you could see that, that the three options that is shown here, we have the cremation, which we know today is polluting our, our, uh, our atmosphere. We know that we have mercury fillings in our teeth that are creating problems. We know that in every wet burning process we always produce dioxins. Oh, terrible. And, and we just saw that as a good alternative. I mean, it was in 1860, all around the world, there were people, lawyers and, and doctors and clever people, they said it's not okay that we are with a deep burial there on the left down. We are polluting the groundwater. We cannot continue doing that because water is one of our most important food uh, liquids. So, so we need to be careful with the, with the water. Um, so what do you say about choosing nature's own method to really produce soil instead? Uh, by preparing the body to become small particles because the, the soil on its own is not able to, to chew. You know, you haven't ever seen the soil chewing. So that, that is what the animals, the carnivores, are doing, doing for us. They are preparing the body to become soil. So what I did was, as I said, replacing the animals with a technique that is preparing the body to really become soil. It's not rocket science. I mean, you can use a lot of things. What was complicated in our case was what we tried to have a method that was not using any tools that you could find in your kitchen or in your garage. So there were no hands. And that is a little bit more tricky. Uh, and I thought that I was down to earth business until NASA one day called and asked me to use the method when they used it for the trip to Mars. So that was unexpected. But apart from that, this is not rocket science. So, and you can see that instead of, of creating uh, a long, long circle of organic life that will last for, for millions of years, we are creating a very, very short circle of organic life where the organic matter uh, that is my body, I mean the result that you see here is the result of 60 years of almost of, of organic food and that this is what it ends up with. And, and if, if I'm going to be broken down, uh, my carbon is going to contribute to the life in the soil, as exactly what the biologist said uh, in the video here, that we can really keep the carbon inside the soil if we, if we use uh, the method that nature prefers. So that is a process that is really promoting new life. So death is not the, going to be the final end. It is going to be from beginning to start. It will start something new. And you can very well uh, choose your own plant, your own bush or rose or tree or whatever, and you can see that the things that once build your bodies is going to be broken down to create the possibilities for new life to grow. So you have a little, quite natural, absolutely non-poisonous circle of life 
if we just try to learn what the word organic means and how we should allow it to break down. And um, on top of that, uh, we said, okay, if this is an improved burial, what about the people who would like to scatter their ashes? Isn't that going to be okay in the future? So we said, why don't we just develop a new type of cremator for those who would like to have that end result? Because you can never, you can never spread the freeze-dried, metal-free remains on the ground because it is still to be looked upon as food. And if we spread it, it will be food for birds or dogs or whatever. So if you want to scatter, you need to do a preparation. And then we created the new, he is, he is very happy, this, uh -huh. so this is the new compact cremator where you can cremate the freeze-dried metal-free remains. And the interesting thing is because we are carbon, especially when we are dry, it's very obvious. And if you, dry, if you burn those freeze-dried metal-free remains, it doesn't take any energy at all, it gives energy. Uh, approximately 300 kilowatt hours per burning. And it doesn't have all the pollutants that is coming out. Because you can control that burning process, you can avoid the dioxin production and the mercury we already took away. So it is the only method in the world where we can guarantee zero mercury. Total zero mercury. So, um, and um, in the middle you see, this is a method there that I suppose is, is most important to introduce for humans. Because if we start with, with pets or dogs, then people will say, uh oh, I'm not going to use that. Uh, so we start with the most complicated to choose to change the burial industry, which is quite easy. <laughs> and, and after that, uh, I think it is going to be offered, of course, for our cats and dogs, for our horses, for our carcasses, and for everything else that is organic in our society that needs to be treated in the best of ways, instead of transporting rotting water that is going to create problems. So, everyone needs to know the circle of organic life. Our foundation has started um, a non-profit organization, and I'm so happy to see that this has created such an interest from all over the world. And we have been just um, starting this and, and we see that people would like to help out. So I'm not the, the, the leader that are going to tell you how to do, but I, I hope to bring you some knowledge so that you, together with everyone else on this planet, would like to see changes within this area. Thank you.